This is morning prayer on the Tuesday of Holy Week. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And this from the Lamentations. Is it nothing to you, all who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the fierce day of his anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears, for a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember, remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, for the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion. Or according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, uh, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind and we keep silence so to do. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. We continue in the Gospel of Luke, Luke 22. A dispute also arose amongst them as which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest amongst you must become like the youngest and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials and I confer on you just as my father has conferred on me a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Then he said to them, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied me three times. He said to them, when I sent you out with a purse, bag or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not, not a thing. He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, pray what you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them, about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me yet not my will but yours be done then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength in his anguish he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling on the ground 
when he got up from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, uh, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? And then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said no more of this, and he touched the ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. I'm reading for you this week uh, from my favourite poet, uh, John O'Donoghue, also priest and uh, writer um, who died uh, some years ago now. Uh, he wrote a selection of poems uh, called uh, The Sorrowful, Sorrowful Mysteries. And this one is called The Scourging at the Pillar. When we love, we love to touch the beloved. Our hands find joy in the surprise of skin. Here is where tenderness is uncovered. Few frontiers hold a world more wondrous in. Imagine the anger of their disturbance. They cannot bear the portals his words create. Helpless, turned inside out by his presence, sheltering from themselves as a crowd irate. Made to face the pillar, the wrists bind him under the shadow of the angel of pain, who flogs and waits, prefers a broken rhythm until his back becomes a red text of shame. His mind holds to the images of those he loves while his frightened skin swells under the scourge. The Scourging at the Pillar by John O'Donoghue. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father through the Son who suffered on the cross for the world's redemption. Fill with your spirit Christ's broken body, the church. Give to Christian people everywhere a deep longing to take up the cross and to understand its mysterious glory. By the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Bless those who lead the church's worship at this solemn time, in the preaching of the word, in the celebration of the sacraments. Draw your people close to you. By the Saviour's cross, and passion, Lord, save us and help him. help us. Strengthen those among us who are preparing for baptism, together with their teachers, sponsors and families. Teach them what it means to die and to rise with Christ and prepare them to receive the breath of his spirit. By the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Lord, look in mercy upon the world you love so much that you sent your son to suffer and to die. Strength, strengthen those who work to share the reconciliation won at such cost upon the cross. 
by the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Bring healing by the wounds of Christ to all who are weighted down by pain and injustice. Help the lonely and the betrayed, the suffering and the dying to find strength in the companionship of Jesus and in the passion, his passion, and to know their salvation. By the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Welcome into paradise all who have left this world in your friendship. According to your promises, bring them with all the saints to share in the benefits of Christ's death and resurrection. By the Saviour's cross and passion, Lord, save us and help us. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The Collect for this day. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.